Hello friends, welcome to Codage. In today's session, we will learn how to connect to the database that is deployed in the private subnet. So let's understand the component that we are going to deploy in the AWS cloud. So in the AWS cloud, we will first create a VPC. In the VPC, we will have AZ. And in the AZ, we are going to have public and the private subnet. And we will also have internet gateway to connect to the internet. So in the private subnet, we will deploy our IDS database. So in our demonstration, I am going to use the MySQL database. In the public subnet, we are going to deploy one EC2 instance, which we will use to connect to the RDS database from our local machine. So we will have a security group, which will allow traffic only from the EC2 instance to the database. Then we will also have a security group for the EC2 instance, which will allow traffic from the internet to the EC2 instance. So at the end, this is how the flow will look like. So from DB client, we will send request to the Internet Gateway. Internet Gateway will forward that request to the EC2 instance. And EC2 instance will forward that request to the RDS database. So let's move on to the demonstration. So in the AWS console, search for the VPC. Let's click on the Create VPC. And here I'm going to select VPC and More option. Let's give the name for the VPC. So here I am giving name as a YT demo. Let's select the CIDR block. So I am selecting as a 10.4.0.0 slash 16. Next, select the AZ. So I am going to select two AZ. Then we will have two public subnet in the AZ. Then we will have two private subnet. So NAT gateway is not required for our demonstration. So I am selecting none. And we are not going to use VPC endpoint. That's why I'm selecting none. Now here you can see the preview of your virtual network. So here we will have two AZ, that is AP South is 2A and AP South is 2B. And in each AZ, it will have one public and the private subnet. Then here you can see it will have one network gateway. Okay. Now let's click on this create VPC option here. Let's click on the view VPC option here. Here you can see the details related to your VPC. Let's click on the subnets and let's select the VPC that we have just created. Okay, let's click on the refresh button here. And here you can see the subnets that we have created. Now let's create a security group for our database and the EC2 instance. So let's search for EC2. And let's go into the security group option here. And let's create a new security group. So here I'm creating security group for the EC2 instance first. So let me give it name as a EC2 SG. Let me give same name in the description. Let's select the VPC that we have created. So that will be YT demo. And let's add the inbound rule for our EC2 instance. So here we are going to allow traffic from the SSH and it will be from anywhere okay because we are going to connect to the ec2 instance using ssh only then let's click on the create security group okay so our security group is created for the ec2 instance now let's create a new security group for the database so let's click on the create security group here and let me give it name as a db sg let me give same in the description and let's select the VPC that we have created. And let's add the inbound rule here. So let's click on the add rule. And here, let's search for the MySQL. Okay, so it will automatically select the 3306 port that is used for the MySQL. And here we are going to allow traffic only from the EC2 instance. So let's search for the EC2 instance security group. So this is the security group for the EC2 instance. Then let's click on the create security group. Okay, so this will allow traffic only from the EC2 instance. Now, if you're using database for other components, in that case, you need to add the rule for the that particular component. Okay, now next we will deploy the database in the private subnet. So let's search for the IDS. 
and here we will first create the subnet group so let's click on the subnet groups option here and let's click on the create db subnet group let me give it name as a private subnet db group let me copy same in the description now let's search for the vpc that we have created so that will be yt demo let's select the az so let me select 2a and 2b because we use 2a and 2b in the vpc then let's select the subnet that will be private subnet so let me go into the vpc and here you can see private subnets ip address start with 10.4.128 10.4.144 so we need to select the same subnet in the subnet group so this is the private subnet from 2a and this is the private subnet from the 2b and let's click on the create button okay so our subnet group is created now let's go into the database option here and let's click on the create database so I'm selecting standard create option here. Engine option will be MySQL. Then I'm keeping the engine version as a default one. And here I'm selecting template as a free tier because I'm using this database for the demonstration purpose. In your case, you can use the option as per your requirement. Then let's give name for the instance identifier. So here I'm giving name as a test hyphen database hyphen one then let's give the username so here i am giving username as a root next enter the password now here i am selecting the instance type as a db t2 micro because i am using this uh, database for the demonstration next keep the other option as a default one let's go into the storage auto scaling here I am disabling this storage auto scaling option. Now here in the connectivity section, let's select the VPC that we have just created. So that will be YT demo. And here select the subnet group. So it is automatically get selected. That will be private subnet that we have just created. Then we don't want to allow public access to our database. That's why I'm selecting no here. Then here choose the existing security group. So let's select the security group that we have created for the database that will be db hyphen sg the next option is for the az so i am selecting as a no preference then let's go into the additional configuration so here you can specify the database ports so we have already configured double three zero six in the security group so i'm keeping the same port in the database port then database authentication will be password authentication then let's go into the additional configuration so here i am giving database name as a yt lecture and i am keeping other option as a default one here i am disabling this enable automated backup option and also disabling this minor version upgrade option and let's click on the create database so it is going to take some time to create the database so in the meantime let's create a ec2 instance in the public subnet so let's search for the ec2 here and let's click on the instances or you can click on this launch instance option here and let me give it name as a db connect then I'm selecting AMI as a default one that will be Amazon Linux and instance type I'm selecting as a T2 micro. Then here we will require to create a key pair because we are going to connect to the EC2 instance using SSH. So let's click on this create a new key pair option here. Let me give it name as a EC2 key pair and key pair type will be RSA private key file format will be dot pm let's click on the create key pair here so it has downloaded the key pair on my local machine then let's select the edit option here for the network setting and here select the vpc that we have just created so that will be yt demo and in the subnet section let's select the 
public subnet. So it is automatically selected the first public subnet. Then for the auto assign public IP, so let's select the enable because we want to assign the IP address for our EC2 instance. Then here, let's select the existing security group. So we are going to select the security group that we have created for the EC2, that will be EC2 SG. And let's keep other option as a default one and click on the launch instance. So let's click on the instances option here. And it is getting initialized. So let's go back into the database. And database is also in the creation state. So let's wait for some time. Okay, so our database is created. Now let's go into the instances. So our instance is also in the running state. Okay, now let's go into the database and let's click on this DB identifier option here. And here you can find the detail related to the database connection. So this will be the endpoint that will be host for your database. And this will be the port. And these are the subnet detail in which this database is deployed. So if you click on one of the subnet here, so you can see this is deployed in the private subnet. Let's select the another subnet option here. And this is also private subnet. Okay, so our database is in the private subnet. Now next what we will do, we will connect to this database from our local machine. For that purpose, I am going to use DB client to connect to the database. So as a database client, I am using DBWare. You can use any database client as per your requirement. So let's select this option to connect to the database. Let's select the MySQL and let's click on the next. And in the connection setting, let's go into this SSH option here. And here we are going to use SSH tunneling to connect to the database. So let's select this use SSH tunnel option. So here we need to copy the host IP address of our EC2 instance. Okay, so let's go into the EC2 instance option here. Let's click on this instance ID and just copy this public IPv4 DNS name. And use it into this host IP option here. So username will be EC2 hyphen user and authentication method we are going to select public key so in the private key section we need to select the private key so we have already created the private key when we were launching the ec2 instance right and we have downloaded that private key on our local system so let's select that private key here so this is my private key and let's click on this test tunnel configuration Let's select the yes, click OK. OK, so our SSH connection is successful. Next, let's click on this main option here. And here we need to enter the server host. So let's go into the RDS configuration and let's copy this endpoint name. So let me copy this. So I'm keeping database option as a blank username will be root and let's enter the password and click on the test connection okay so we have successfully connected so let's click on the okay let me click on the finish and here if you expand this option here and if you go into the databases so this is the database that we have created so this is the first option to connect to the database there is another option to connect to the database using SSH tunneling from the terminal. So let me delete this connection now. Okay, and we will see the another option to connect to the database. So let me open the terminal. So first CD into the directory in which you have downloaded your private key pair. Okay, so I'm already in that directory. So this is my private key pair. Okay. Now let's run command that is SSH hyphen I, then your AC2 key pair name. Okay. Then let's enter hyphen F hyphen capital N hyphen capital L. 
then next is your local port so that will be double three zero six colon then your database endpoint so that will be this one so let's copy this and colon and your remote port number so that will be double three zero six then next your ec2 username so that will be ec2 hyphen user it then your ip address of your ec2 instance so let's go into the ec2 instance detail and let's copy this public ipv port dns name and hyphen v and let's press the enter okay so it is giving error because we have not assigned the permission to our ec2 instance key pair so let's assign the permission to our ec2 instance key pair so command will be ch mode 0400 then your ec2 key pair file name and let's use the same ssh command now let's go into the db client and let's select this option to connect to the database let's select the mysql and here we are not required to configure ssh again because we have already configured it in the terminal okay so let's go into the main and here ip address will be 127.0.0.1 because we have already created the ssh tunneling okay now let's use the username as a root and let's use the password and let's click on the test connection option here okay so you can see we have successfully connected to the database so let me finish it so if you expand it in the database section so here you can see this is the database we have configured in the mysql server so when you are developing any application on your local machine and in that case if you want to connect to the database so in this way you can connect to the database using the ssh tunneling okay so that's it for this lecture thanks for watching the video